All right, so let's do a more, slightly more complicated example of a separable equation. We've done like a really simple one. Let's do a more complicated example. More complicated example. So let's say that you have dy dx equals 4 minus 2x over 3y squared minus 5. So remember, the way we like to write this is as g of x times k of y. So our g of x is 4 minus 2x. And our k of y, in this case, is 3y squared minus 5. So, I guess really you have an issue if it's equal to zero or if it's undefined. So, when is this undefined? Well, when 3y squared minus 5 equals zero, which is when 3y squared equals 5, which is when y squared equals 5 thirds. So, really you have an issue when y equals plus or minus root 5 thirds. This is your problem point or problem value. So actually, in this case, you get uh, two horizontal bars, right? That are going to be issues. Okay. Now, so let's do what we need to do to solve. You're going to multiply both sides by 3y squared minus 5. And then you're going to div wait, shit, <laughs> I always do this wrong. Uh, multiply both sides by 3 squared by 3y squared minus 5. And then you also need to multiply both sides by dx. Oh, yeah. Whatever, I'm just not going to show it. There's no point in showing it. Sorry. We're just going to get all cluttered. So what are we going to get? We're going to get 3y squared minus 5 dy equals 4 minus 2x dx. Okay, then we got to integrate. All right, so let's do this. Uh, antiderivative of 3y squared is literally y cubed. Antiderivative of 5 is... 5y. Yeah, 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 yeah. Antiderivative of 4 is 4x. Antiderivative of minus 2x is minus x squared. Okay, cool. And you get like a plus c. Okay, so what you get here is we're going to move everything over and we're going to get y cubed minus 5y minus 4x minus x squared equals c. This is our general solution. That I can't type. <laughs> general general solution uh, you might not be familiar with this sort of equation uh, it's it's in a, it's called an elliptic curve it actually looks really weird so depending upon your initial values you're gonna get uh, different sorts of curves but let me I'm gonna go to Wolfram and I need to make the stream plot the vector plot or the stream plot for this so, one second. So you can sort of see what this looks like. Actually, probably what we should make is a contour plot. Okay, wait, one second. Sorry, I'm having like a hard time like trying to copy the command. So, give me a moment, and then I'm going to paste. Let's do a stream plot. Okay, then our thing was... 4 minus 2 times x divided by 3 times y squared minus 5. 
let's uh, zoom out. We're gonna go from, x is gonna go from minus four to eight. And then, okay, that, that would be a lot of value. Okay, cool. Copying the graphic. So I'm pasting it. Okay, you might have never seen graphs that look like this before, but um, things with cubics, especially cubics on Y, the elliptic curves, they look really interesting. So remember we had our two values that would rule out solutions. Y equals plus or minus root 5 thirds. Can someone give me the decimal values on those two? What's the square root of 5 thirds approximately? Like 5 thirds is 1.66, so what's the square root of 1.66 approximately? Thank you, 1.291. And where would that be approximately? Right here. And you can actually see that there's this interesting thing that happens right there. There's also right here. So what would happen is, let's say that your initial condition was y of 1 equals 3. So remember, this is the x value, this is the y value. So we have the point 1, 3, which would be like right here. The solution you get is this blue line, it looks sort of like a semicircle. It doesn't cross. But let's say that your solution was, um, or your initial condition was 3, 3. Uh, y of 3 equals 3. That would be like right, right here. You would get this solution. as your particular solution. Or if you chose, let's say you had this point right here. Uh, I'm trying to like come up with a whole number I could use, but whatever, we'll just choose this right here. This looks like y of zero equals, I don't know, negative 1.5 or so. You would get this. So they're called elliptic curves because like the different parts of them sort of look like um, the different conic sections. That sort of looks like a piece of hyperbola. The other parts, you see how they, it looks like it's a stream whirling around? The first one is three comma one. Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Good, good catch. Where would one comma three be? That'd be more like right. One comma three would be more like up here. Okay, but does but hopefully you can see. Does everyone see how there's like these three different possibilities of solutions depending upon where your starting point is? And altogether, it looks really cool. Do you see how it looks sort of like a whirlpool, like draining? But apparently, you can't ever get like a full cycle. Like you, you get like if you look at this area here. Oops. Like where the world, oops, ah, I want that in red. Okay, why is it not letting me like, whatever. There we go. If you look at that area right here, does everyone see the whirlpool? Like you don't get like a whole circular part of it. You either get like the top part of the gy gyration or the bottom part of the gy gyration. And you have like an interesting phenomenon right here where it looks like everything's circling around that. Eventually we'll look at what that means.